Let's take a look at something called the derivative theorem. The idea for this theorem is kind of backwards from the way that we use it, at least the way that it's developed. And the idea here is, what happens if we take a derivative in the S world, or after we've already transformed something, what does that end up doing in the T world? So if I have some uh, big F of S, we've already done the Laplace transform of, what happens if I take the derivative with respect to S of that? Well, that's saying what's the derivative with respect to S of the Laplace transform of F of T? So this is really zero to infinity, e to the negative S T, F of T dt. All right, because that's by definition what big F of S is. Well, if you do that, uh, since this is a continuous function, we can bring in that derivative, uh, derivative with respect to S, e to the negative S T, F of T, dt. Now remember this is a derivative with respect to S. Almost all of this is T's except for this. So when we take the derivative of that, we're gonna get zero to infinity, that's negative T, uh, e to the negative s t f of t dt or i'm going to go ahead and bring that negative out and we'll just write this as e to the negative s t t f of t now the reason i left the t in there and i didn't bring it out of course because this is an integral with respect to t it can't leave so basically if i took the derivative in the s world i ended up adding a t to my function here with a negative or if i bring a negative to the other side the negative derivative with respect to s of big F of s is the integral from zero to infinity, e to the negative s t, t f of t dt, or I can just rewrite that as the Laplace transform of t f of t. So except for maybe a negative, really multiple, or taking the derivative in s world was multiplying by a t in the t world. The way we normally do this is actually backwards. If we multiply it by t in the t world, it is derivatives in the s world. So you can do this several times, and you see each time you do it, you get another negative. So the generic rule for this is, if you take the Laplace transform of t to the n f of t, what that ends up being, it's negative one to the n, n derivative with respect to s, big f of s. So the idea here is, if you're multiplying by t in the t world, what you can do is you can just do the Laplace transform of f of t, and then whatever the power of t is, take that number of derivatives in the s world. So let's take a look at a couple of examples where this might uh, be helpful. Just kind of using that rule there. All right, so let's say that we had, um, let's do, I actually find the Laplace transform of t, let's do uh, sine 4t. Okay, since we're multiplying by t in the t world, uh, all we got to do is say, well, I know that just ends up being uh, derivatives in the s world. So that's negative 1 to the first, because that's the power on the t the first derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of sine of 4t. Now that's one that we should know by now, so this is just gonna be negative derivative with respect to s of, the derivative of sine of 4t is gonna be four over s squared plus 16. Okay, since uh, we don't have any s's on the top, we can just think about this as S squared plus 16 to the negative one power. All right, bring down the power, so that negative is gonna cancel with that negative. So I'm just gonna have four S squared plus 16 to the negative two, multiplied by the derivative on the inside, which is gonna be two S. So it gives me eight S over S squared plus 16 squared. Okay, so multiplying by T in the T world, just gives us a derivative in the S world. Now let's take a look at one that we've done before and see that these theorems are actually interchangeable. I said the Laplace transform of t squared e to the 4t. 
Okay, so to do this, we've seen our first shifting theorem. Said this. What we can do with this, since we're multiplying by an e, we can just do the Laplace transform of t squared and then shift all the s's to s minus 4, right? Because we're shifting by that quantity. Well, the Laplace transform of t to a power, let's see, the Laplace transform of t to the n is uh, n factorial over s to the n plus 1. Quick second. Okay, so the Laplace transform of t squared will be 2 factorial all over uh, s to the 2 plus 1, and we're going to replace all of our s's with s minus 4. So we end up with 2 over s cubed, s to s minus 4, or 2 over s minus 4 cubed. So using our first shifting theorem, that's what we would have gotten. What would have happened if we would have done our derivative theorem now? Well, according to our derivative theorem, we're multiplying by t in the t world, that's a derivative in the s world. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the negative 1 squared, second derivative with respect to s, of the Laplace transform of e to the 4t. Okay, so that's just going to be positive. So we need to find a second derivative with respect to s of 1 over s minus 4. So just by definition. All right, again, we, since we have no s's on the top, we can write this as s minus 4 to the negative 1. Uh, the first derivative of that, so if we take one derivative, that gives me negative s minus 4 to the negative 2. And then if we take the derivative of that, we bring down the power, so that's 2s minus 4 to the negative 3, or 2 over s minus 4 cubed. Notice we ended up with the exact same answer. So notice, now that we get more of these theorems, you have more options on how to do these transforms. Is one better than the other? Not necessarily. It's kind of how you see it. Now you can also use this derivative theorem to help you do inverse Laplace transforms. Now this way is generally a little bit more difficult, takes a little bit more messing around. Let's do something close to like what we just did. What if I said find the uh, inverse Laplace transform of, I don't know, 3 over s minus 2 cubed. Now, if you've done some of these, you notice, well, hey, that looks like the derivative of the s minus 2, a bunch of derivatives. So is there any way that I can rewrite this? Well, first off, we know we can bring constants out front, so let's bring that out front real quick. This is really 1 over s minus 2 cubed. Well, if you're thinking here, that's just a bunch of derivatives of 1 over s minus 2. Uh, go over to the side and figure that out. So if I have 1 over s minus 2, the derivative with respect to s of that, 1 over s minus 2, again, you can bring it up to the top, that's negative 1 over s minus 2 squared. Well, that's getting close to this, so if I did the derivative of that, 1 over s minus 2, that's really the derivative of this, bring down the power, take 1 away from the power, so I'd end up with 2 over s minus 3 squared. Now notice that's almost what I have here. So again, we can, we can compensate this a little bit. Let's go ahead and, uh, I'll write one more step. Let's go ahead and write this as uh, s minus 2 cubed. And I'm going to need a 2 on the top for it to actually be that derivative, so we're going to pull that out front. <coughs> Now, since this is the second derivative of our function, what does this end up being? Let's see, this is going to be 3 halves. Since we think it's the second derivative, we need negative 1 to the second power. Second derivative with respect to s of 1 over s minus 2. Now, according to our theorem, let me stick our theorem uh, right here is fine. The Laplace transform of t to the n f of t is going to be negative 1 to the n, nth derivative with respect to s of f of s. 
Okay, so notice what I have here. Um, I've put my negative one to the derivative I think it is, and I know the second derivative of this gives me this function inside of here. So this is my big F of S. The derivative part means I'm multiplying by t's in the t world, and that fits exactly what I need. So the three has our overall constant. Since it's the second derivative, I'm gonna get a t squared. Now, if this is my big F of S, if big F of S is one over S minus two, then little f of t, just using our inverse transform, is e to the 2t. So 3 halves t squared e to the 2t. So if you notice that you have a derivative, which a lot of times shows up as powers in the denominator, see if you can rewrite that as the derivative of something you do know the inverse Laplace transform of. Then you can use this derivative theorem. Not the easiest theorem to use, takes a little bit of practice, but it can be, as you see, fairly helpful.